Right, show my fam, welcome back to the MSD Systems YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be going over a little bit of a vlog style video, just giving you a little bit of information about myself really and my training and stuff. So if you've been following along with the YouTube, you'll have seen that I entered my first competition back for about four or five years. Um, I did an eight week prep and I did the competition uh, two days ago. This video will probably go out before the competition video. So make sure you check that competition video out to know how I did and how I got on. But I'm gonna go over now what I'm gonna be doing in, for a short little phase of training after my competition. And it's just something I wanted to put out on here because it's something for you guys to consider because oftentimes when people do a competition, they struggle with post-competition blues, you know, they struggle with you know, not feeling like they've got much of a goal um, or any kind of direction. And they're just kind of going in the gym and doing some stuff. You know what I mean? That they're not, they're struggling with actually getting back on the saddle and working towards the long-term goals. And oftentimes the big mistake people make is they jump straight back into another show or they, they start prepping for a max deadlift or something, all right? And I wanna go over and explain to you my scenario and, and how my training prep went and things that happened and what I'm gonna do for the next two weeks. And maybe you can just use it as a little bit of info for yourselves. Something to consider next time you, you do a comp, guys. So, competition prep. We had about eight week prep for the show. And at the start, if you go back and look at my old videos, at the start, I did originally not plan to enter a comp in January and I started prepping for an axle, heavy axle press and uh, also a front squat, I was pushing the front squat as well. Now what happened is about two weeks after that, I entered um, this competition because a couple of friends mentioned it to me. It was local, weights were pretty suited for my first show back. I hadn't even trained probably guys for about seven months, so I was really deconditioned to everything. So I needed an introductory comp back and this was perfect. It was an hour away, it was local. Um, the events were, were you know, relatively simple to train, nothing too complex. Uh, so yeah, I entered this competition and it had logging, not axle. And it also had a max deadlift in. At the time, I wasn't planning on pushing the deadlift and I wasn't even gonna plan, plan on training log, to be honest with you. Now, I made the rookie mistake of thinking, oh, I'm an animal, I'm a beast, you know, I'm the fucking dragon, I can do what I want. And I just added logging and heavy deadlifts on top of my current workload that I had planned. And lo and behold, what do you get if you get a deconditioned human that hasn't been training for a long period of time? He's got a lot of maximal strength potential available to extract, but he's not conditioned or resilient to it and you give him too much volume. Well, things start to go wrong and that's what kind of happened for me. So the main issue that I encountered was actually the combination of doing heavy axle and log. Um, it basically, it gives me quite a bit of um, repetitive strain type. Well, I, I feel like what it was is I just, I got strong real fast. It's my own fault, guys. Shannon will probably be able to attach this as a little edit, but I did a 150 axle after about three weeks of axling. I shouldn't have done that, to be honest with you. <laughs> it was, it was ever since, I think I had 120 on the plan and I popped out 150. And it was easy and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna axle 180 next week. But it was that 150 axle that flared up a little bit of uh, biceps tendonitis, distal bicep tendonitis. So the bottom of the bicep here, this insertion point here, I've got a tendonitis issue going on. That happened about four weeks ago, maybe five, however long it was. And, you know, I added logging on top. I started filling it on log clean. There was a stone to shoulder event. I started filling it on stones. And it's just progressively got a little worse uh, to the point where I can actually, weirdly, the, the thing I feel on the most is yoke because when I'm on the yoke here and I, I like to push forward, you know, it's quite a bit of stress on the bicep. And um, yeah, I could really feel it on yoke as well. So going into the competition, I did, sorry guys, my phone's going mad. I did a, uh, I did a deload and I basically you know, re reset myself as much as I could for the competition. I took painkillers on the day, guys. I don't recommend taking painkillers ever, but on competition day, I do always treat myself to some ibuprofen because I don't want to know what's going on. I, you know, I accept the fact when I enter the competition, I'm going ham, yeah, I'm going ham. So I don't want to know what's going on. I'll figure that shit out afterwards. So I took a bit of ibuprofen, 400 milligrams in the morning of the competition, 400 milligrams uh, about an hour into the comp, but after the first event, I took another 400 milligrams. So got through the comp completely fine, but then the next day, yesterday, I really sore bicep, real sore bicep. It was, uh, you know, I'd probably say it's like a five, four or five out of 10 tendonitis issue. So I've just done my comp, I'm looking at my next training phase next week. I've got this, uh, you know, chronic kind of bicep tendonitis going on. And um, 
Apart from that, oh, I've got a little bit of a rear delt issue on my left side as well. I think it's rear delt, maybe it's, um, you know, teres minor, I'm not 100% sure. That's actually a very recurring injury. I have no idea how, how I did it, guys. I think it was, if you've been watching the training videos, I said I was doing some CrossFit on a Friday. Uh, I'm actually randomly all right at CrossFit, by the way. I did, I did CrossFit for two years about fucking eight years ago I learned how to do all the you know all the butterfly pull-ups handstand walks handstand push-ups all that stuff I can still do all that double unders all that I can still do all that stuff so you know went into this ward and it was like Lewis had me doing like 100 pull-ups or something and um, the week before I was uh, not being very good at the butterfly pull-ups and then this week I went in and I just just butterfly pull up like a set of 50 unbroken and um, I think I did it on that um, set of butterfly pull-ups so again all these little niggles I've picked up very avoidable guys i'd had a big break off training I, I was still training but i was just doing machine work you know fluff work so you know i wasn't conditioned for these dynamic movements and i've obviously just been an idiot but it's tough being athletic you know what i mean you like to show off don't you you know i don't want to go into a crossfit gym and do a couple of strict pull-ups and be like oh i'm playing it easy you know you just get in the zone and, and go for it. it's my own fault so basically now i've got an option which is jump back into training and prep for the next goal which would be another competition or something, or take a short acute period of time out to completely reset myself, undo the mistakes that I made at the, during the last training phase, and basically start again. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And this is a really great thing for you guys to do as well, because a lot of people don't realize that when you're doing a competition prep and you're pushing the load, and especially if you enter a competition that's quite challenging for yourself, you're gonna pick up not just, even if you don't get niggles or injuries, they're gonna be structural balance issues where you know, you're pushing certain things a little harder than others, like maybe you're pressing more often than you're pulling, you know, I know that's a little bit of a, a, a BS ratio, but you know, that's just something everybody says in it. Oh, do double the upper back work to your pressing work. Like that's not, that's not a true ratio guys. That's some bro science, but you get the point. Things can get out of balance and out of whack and positions can get messed up. So I'm going to be doing a two week restoration phase. And the reason why this is a brilliant thing to do post competition, I often have my clients do this exact phase as well. This is actually a phase that the MST Systems app, which is being released on the 1st of March, this two week mini restoration phase will be in the MST Systems app available to just run. You'll be able to click, assign, boom, and do it. The whole goal of this two week phase is to basically do a lot of unilateral work, a lot of structural balance work, a lot of isolation on muscle groups that are not often hit. Um, it's, it's very um, parasympathetic type stimulus, so it's all focused on nasal breathing, slightly elevated heart rate with nasal breathing, relaxed environment, uh, good contractions, good positions, uh, a lot of focus on pelvic, uh, pelvic position, making sure we're getting the right, uh, right neutral position and, and, and working away from that kind of anterior pelvic tilt that we'd often get in, um, in strongman. Um, so yeah, it's a restoration phase we're gonna be going into, guys. Straight out of competition, a restoration phase is amazing to go into because we're just not only reset setting the physiological issues that we've um, come, come kind of in contact with through the competition prep, but neurologically as well, we're letting the nervous system completely calm down, bringing our resting heart rate down, gonna do a lot of aerobic work, guys. Um, pretty much every session is gonna be aerobic, very low rest times, um, probably about 40 to 60 minute sessions, so a lot shorter than usual. Um, in terms of compound lifts, I'm gonna continue doing the log and I'm gonna continue deadlifting. Um, they're gonna be in an aerobic style phase, so it's gonna be 45 seconds maximum rest time, so it's gonna be real gassy def sets. You know, load's gonna be extremely low, but when I say def sets, I mean on the heart. Um, you know, very, very gassy sets. And basically taking this whole time to uh, lay a foundation and structure down that I can then work towards my next goal with. And this restoration phase, the reason why it's so good to do post-competition is oftentimes you feel lost after a comp, like what's my next goal? And what this does is it adds an extension onto your last goal. So you've, you've, you've done this huge prep, you've peaked, you've got your body into the, the position that you're able to extract 100% strength out of your strength potential. You've done a competition, Hopefully you've performed well, or maybe you underperformed, or maybe you picked up a niggle. Whatever happens in the comp happens. But then instead of just waking up on Monday morning like, oh, what do I do now? I'm going to the gym. You know, right, it's time for me to undo all the stuff that I've done to my body, all the negative stuff. So foot control, guys, is, is a huge one. Knee stability, hip stability, shoulder stability. You know, there's so many things that we can put in. I wish I could tell you all this, but unfortunately, you know, this is this is the phase that is gonna go in the app, so this is paid content. Um, by the way, guys, 
it, hopefully this video goes up before um, this happens, but on the 1st of February, this is the last time you can subscribe to MST Bot. If you have an active subscription, um, Basically, if you sign up to MST, but on the 1st of February, you get a month free. So it'll take you through to the 1st of March. 1st of March is our app release date, guys. So if you have an active subscription on the 1st of March, you'll get a lifetime discount to the MST Systems app. Where you are going to be able to access so much information, uh, build your own training cycles, th these restoration phases, triphasic phases for strongman, everything's going to be in there. It's going to be class. That's enough plug-in sales, though. I'm here to give you some random free info. But... The restoration phase is an extension of your last phase, so it gives you time to reset your brain as well. Bring you out of that sympathetic state. If you've been pushing the gear, if you've been pushing drugs, it gives you time to calm down back to a cruise dose, get your hormone levels back to a more stable zone, reset your body, reset your structural balance, and, and just bring everything back down to baseline where you've got a clearer vision, you've had time to think of stuff, you can plan your next goals accordingly. And a lot of the times people look at training for a, a, a small lens and they look at it over an acute period of time. Like for example, if I say to people, let's do a two week restoration phase, a lot of my clients are like, well, well will I not get weaker? And I'm like, well, what's your end goal? Like, it, like for example, my end goal this year is official Strongman Games in November, okay? What, what is doing two weeks restoration work in February gonna do for my goal in November? Nothing negative, you know, that's common sense, isn't it? But sometimes people look through too, too much of a small lens and they go, oh, I can't take two weeks off heavy training and do all this bullshit work because, you know, won't my max deadlift go down? Won't this happen? Won't it's like, no, no guys, we need, to, we need to look at training over a longer period of time than just acutely through this small little lens. So that is my next training phase that I'm gonna be doing post-competition. Um, it's going to be just for two weeks, no, nothing longer. I am also going to be running for the bicep tendonitis. Obviously, the loads and stuff are going to be reduced. Any exercises that aggravate this tendonitis issue are going to be removed. And uh, I am going to be running uh, BPC 157 and TB 500 uh, to help uh, you know, speed up the recovery process and bring down the inflammation in the tendon. Uh, if, you, if you want to know more about the BPC 157 protocol that I'm running, I do actually have a video pre-made on that. It tells you everything you need to know about BPC 157 if you're in the UK, where to get it from, how to use it, how to load it, how to pin it, where to pin it, uh, dosage protocols, etc. I am just running that dosage protocol on the BPC 157. And yeah, in terms of my next goal, guys, um, I'm gonna have a think over this restoration period. Like I say, two weeks is a long time. It allows you to clear your brain. It allows you to get the, the thoughts out of your head from the last comp, because the thing is with comps, guys, if they go really, the thing with the comp competing in strongman or any sport is it's very effective on your mood and it affects decisions that you make if you make them in the moment. And this is why the restoration phase is so good as well, because it allows you to take yourself out of the moment. For example, if you do a competition and you're expecting top three, and you have a really shit time, you cock up events, you do this, you do that, and you come eighth, if you've put a lot of pressure on yourself for that competition, the next day you're not gonna feel very good, and you might make some bad decisions that you regret. I'm a coach, I see this all the time. The amount of times clients have said to me they're quitting strongman, and they're doing this, and they're doing that, and they leave, and then three weeks later they come back or whatever, it's because they're too invested in the moment and make a decision in the moment. Having a restoration phase after a competition isn't just good for your physical state, it's good for your mental state as well. It gives you time to be like, look, I'm not feeling too good after this competition, so I'm gonna do this restoration phase. You know, I'm not sure if this sport's for me. I'm gonna have a think. And then a week after a restoration phase, you'll start feeling good. Your nervous system will start getting switched from that sympathetic tone into the parasympathetic tone. You'll start to think more clearly and answers will present themselves to you. And you'll make a much more informed and educated and, and clear decision rather than in the moment based upon the emotions from the competition. Same with doing really well in a competition. If you win a competition, you're flying high, you're on cloud nine. And you know, the next day you might be like, oh, you know what, I'm fucking, I'm flying, I'm strong as fuck. Let's get into a deadlift peak, let's do this. And sometimes we can start pushing stuff too long, end up getting ourselves injured, just because we're, we're, we're acting in the moment too much. So main takeaway from this video, guys, is the next time you do anything, whether it be a competition, or whether you peak, or whether you do something absolutely crazy in, in the strength world, um, don't be shy of looking at it through a bigger lens over a longer period of time, throwing in a restoration week to get your body performing optimally, 
getting injuries and niggles at a two or three out of 10, get them to a zero, reset completely physiologically and neurologically, and then get yourself back in the zone with some clear cut goals and outcomes um, so that you can push towards that are gonna be beneficial for your long-term career instead of thinking in the moment based upon the outcomes of the competition. Because like I say, all bad decisions, mate, and they're made in the moment, you know what I mean? Um, don't do that whether it goes good or bad restoration week even one week i like to do two guys but even one week restoration just clear your heads clear your body make some good decisions and trust me you'll thank yourself for it because if you ever do a restoration phase you would be like you know what i feel class i felt like shit last week everything was aching things were hurting I don't even know what was wrong with me. But by dropping the loads, doing unilateral work, nasal, look, you can build your own phase. I'm telling you how to do it now. <laughs> if, you, if you know your exercise flex, you can do this. You just need to do aerobic based work. So get your heart rate elevated, isolate muscle groups that are underutilized. For example, the adductor is a good one to start with. Trap free, there you go, it's two for you. Um, do it in circle st circuit style fashion. Um, Make sure that you're using movement patterns that are low load, no hype, nasal breathing, parasympathetic state, guys, remember. And um, yeah, just, just basically work on, on little weaknesses and niggles and anything that's hurting you, avoid it and put in some rehab for it. Go get some physio treatment, etc. Trust me, you'll thank me if you do it. Um, anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Short and sweet, a little, little bit of a vlog update for you as to what I'm doing next. After this two week restoration phase is done, guys, I will let you know what I decide if I enter another competition or if I just decide to peak something or whatever. But yeah, that is it. Keep an eye out for the competition video from the weekend. It should be going live probably after this video because it's, it's a hard one to edit. Shannon's grafting away. It's a hard one to edit. This one's easy. I've just sat here chatting crap. But yeah, that is it, guys. See you soon.